Man, the piano lesson. Yes, sir. October 13th is open tonight. This yes. one is special, though, Heather. It is absolutely. You already know how I feel. August Wilson is special anyway. Pulitzer Prize winning drama, the piano lesson. But this is special, Heather. Can you say why it's special? It's special because we are always talking and saluting and giving her her flowers. We know that she don't always get to hear that because she's busy. She's working. Mm -hmm. She's a mom. She's a wife. She's a businesswoman. She's a creator. She's a writer. She's a producer. She's an executive producer. Wow. She's a girlfriend. She's a friend. She's a cousin. She's a, she's all the things. And she is here. The one, the only, Candy Bus. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Come on. Smelling like <laughs> toffee up in here, too. <laughs> Candy always look good when she walk up in here. Yes, well, thank you. I enjoy that. Visual pleasure is something that's motivating, <laughs> motivating for human beings, right? Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Man, you look at people, they look good and make you feel and good. Well, let me just say that <laughs> when somebody describes you as visual pleasure, you know, mm. like, that just brings your day in, right? <laughs> Come on, man. Let's go. Better go. <laughs> yes, let's do it. A couple of things, Candy. It's good to see you. It's been a while since you've been in this seat, even yes. though you've been here, you yes. know, in the building. I saw you last week in your leather outfit, I think it was. <laughs> I was wondering how you was going to top that. <laughs> I, I would have worn something different, but I was coming straight from the airport to come see you. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Candy. Give it up for Candy Burris. Yeah. All right. Um, we were just having an interesting conversation before we get into this. Uh, we were playing Cameo Candy. It's like, Candy. And um, I was asking Candy, because to your point, Heather, she's written so many hits for so many people, including mm -hmm. herself. How did she analyze this particular song? And I think this is a good insight for folks who want to learn how to write songs and candy you pointed out what made what, what you felt made this song special is his delivery okay so i mean i think people don't you know you you think the hook is catchy the lyrics you know the, the track is you know whatever mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't think about when somebody vocal produce somebody what they bring out of the song and it's like the delivery, mm -hmm. uh -huh. meaning ow, screaming at appetite, the way he's saying it. Yeah. Like, if you just said ow, <laughs> singing that appetite, well, it's all right. It will be okay. Right. But it's not like what he's bringing, yeah. that energy. Yeah. It's totally different. So you gave a correlation between that and the song Scrubs, right? Well, yes. Um, Well, my example to you was when we um went to OC first, you know, redid the song, right? Because it was originally me and Tiny's first demo, right? Uh -huh. They no scrubs, right? Huh? Yeah, we were like, why doesn't it? We was like, something's missing. Mm. What What is not there? And it was the backgrounds on the hook. Uh huh. So at first, like our hook, they ended up adding our backgrounds back to the song. So if you listen to those scrubs, yes, I'm on the backgrounds on there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But Originally, when they first redid it, you know, they redid the backgrounds, but they were just like, I don't want no scrub, scrub is the guy that can't get no love from me, hanging on the, like that. Okay. Right? It still sounded it's, good, but yeah, it's not. still sounded good, but it, the energy is different when you say, I don't want no scrub, but scrub is the guy that can't get no love from me, hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride. It's different. <laughs> it gives it that valley girl, because really when me and Tiny first did the, the, the feeling I wanted people to get, remember... We like the cars, the cars that go boom, boom, big. That's the that trim. Was, yes, that was the vibe I wanted people to get when they sang the hook. Mm -hmm. So that was the oh. vibe we gave when we were singing it. La Trim inspired no scrubs. Well, they didn't inspire <laughs> the words. The words was inspired by some ex boyfriends, honey. Some scrubs. But, okay, okay. but yeah. that the vibe of the way we sang the hook was the same energy. Remember how I said sometimes that energy gives you, you know, it makes you feel different when you... Tracy, you ever hear Latrim? L apostrophe T-R-I-M-M, -M, I believe. Like I was going through my mind. I don't think so. We like the cars that, the go, cars boom. that go boom. You never heard that song? Probably if I hear it that back I can say yes, but in my mind, it's not coming to me. Yeah, it's back in the day. Back okay, I'll have to dig that one up. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You got that to be me see. Hold on, let me see. This was, this was a big song. Yeah. I analyze everything, though. I like That's that. Because, like, somebody else, when they listen to it, they may not hear what I'm hearing. But for me, it's like you can easily say, we like the cars, the cars that go boom, man, da, da, you know. But they was like, we like the, the cars, cars, the cars that go boom. It gives it a different energy. Shout out to La 
trim. Mm-hmm. It's the vocal yeah. production. Yes, you get the what enunciation. Saying? Yeah, it's how you say it. And that's what make people catch on to certain things when people sing certain songs. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Candy Burr is breaking it mm. down right now. I'm wondering now then, Candy, you know how sometimes you'll see a song and there'll be like 20 people in the songwriter's credits? That'd be too much for me. But listen. You ain't trying to split the check like that? <laughs> <laughs> this what? writer, he told me one time that I told him, he was like, he saw me a couple years ago and he was like, oh my God, I looked look up to you. He said, I remember one time you told me when we were younger, he said, you said, more than two, I don't do. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, dang, I told you that. But <laughs> the thing is, I don't like when it be a whole bunch of people in the room and they want to throw a the on the song or, a, you know, just mm-hmm. like a one word, one two word phrases or one sentence. And they think they're going to get a percentage of the song. Ah, no, <laughs> this song, I, I put all this work in this. You're mm-hmm. not going to come in here with one line, one word and think you finna get 20 percent. No word. way. 20. No way. Well, you know, because you can't. You don't know how the song is going to get split percentage wise when it's all said and done. Because sometimes people be tripping or whatever and want to get more than what they put in. Mm-hmm. So for me to keep the confusion down, less people writing on it, less people we got to figure out. Like if I know it's just me and Tiny, I know me and Tiny put in what we put in, I know what we get. But if this person and that person and all everybody jumping in is like, uh-uh. But, you know, sometimes it's like a lot of writers because they may have a sample on the song. So you have to create um, all the original writers, get a percentage of that song and become right. a writer on the song as well as the new writers. So you got like a whole bunch of names listed. And then some people don't understand that the person who does the music or the producer most of the time, that is also a, considered a writer. He may not have wrote a lyric you know, but he's still a writer because he wrote the music. Right. You know, so him and he might have been two different people putting together the track or three different people. So, yeah. That's the game right there. Candy the, Burris the, is here. The whole game. The whole game. <laughs> Just like that. Mm-hmm. Just like that. I love your uh, your business sensibility. As Heather pointed out, you know, that's one of the things that also attracts me to your career. You know, it's all the various things that you've done. I've eaten in your restaurants. They've treated me like a king. <laughs> I came in. I said, I know candy. All right. <laughs> Hook them up. Hook them up. You try to act like you was related this way. I did. I am related. I'm family. <laughs> I'm Candy's family. She'll tell you. Um, do you have, I've developed certain things, uh, I think, because of trial and error and the way I've done business that I shy away from, you know. Okay. Um, and I'm very careful if I do business with family. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very transparent up front. Mm-hmm. We spell it out, mm-hmm. you know, because I don't want no confusion with family. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of uh, how you approach business, do you have some do's and do you have some don'ts? Um, well, when it comes to family and close friends that um, that I care about that I definitely want to keep in my life forever, I've already made a vow to myself. I'll never fall out with them about money. Okay. Ever. Mm-hmm. So if there's a dispute or somebody upset, and then I'm just letting them have it. Like I'm not gonna fall out with my family about money. Period. Mm-hmm. Like that's never gonna happen. Okay, so <laughs> you, you got that rule. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I just feel like, um, you know, I was raised with a lot of my family members, like meaning cousins mm-hmm. and aunts and. And, you know, like some people don't see those extended members of their family at the time. But growing up, I was like with my family every single Sunday we had to eat together mm-hmm. until I was like mid 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, except for like if I was out on doing a tour or something like that. But, yeah, I was with them every single Sunday. So we was together all the time. And so those are like my sisters, my brothers. And I'm not going to fall out with them about money. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like if they owe me money and they don't give it back. They just didn't give it back. Yeah, you mm. write that off. Or if, you know, it's just yep. like, so certain things, like, I'm now that applies to my family. Now, other people, <laughs> if I if I don't, if you're not a person that I plan to keep in my life forever, mm-hmm. then I can keep you off and cut, cut you off and keep it pushing like we never knew each other. Yeah, your face got Ooh. totally different when you said that part. <laughs> and she leaned into the <laughs> she mic. She leaned into it. When, <laughs> because it's a difference. Like, I'm very much like, this is this and that is that. Okay. I'm not really like a, a mesh in the middle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like I'm very clear on how, you know, what boxes I mm-hmm. separate. <laughs> 
situation. Now, I like that. But you've been in it. You're a veteran. That's why I'm picking your brain now. Come on. You've been in it for a minute. I've had situations. I saw. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was about to say another thing when it comes to family yes. and business. Now, I would not necessarily put them in a position that they aren't ready for. Mm. Okay. Meaning I will put them in a position that I'm grooming them up to grow into. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But don't put them at a, you know, a higher position and then you they disappoint you and then you want to treat them like the, you treat the man off the street. No. You right. can't do that. Because that's still my family. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we going to treat them a certain way. We going to have to help mold them and fix them and, and set them up for greatness. You know what I'm saying? Set them up for greatness. So, but in business, because we are business people, we don't want to lose mm-hmm. our money. Um I feel like when we when I partner up with people, I like to partner up with people who have um, more knowledge than I do in certain situations. So, for instance, uh, for my clothing store tags, you know, like I wanted to do a clothing store, but I never did no clothing store. Mm-hmm. Like I had never done any that, anything like that. But I had a friend who had multiple clothing stores before. Mm-hmm. So I partnered with her because she had that knowledge or whatever. Um, you know, so it's different. You know, you. You know, if you want to be a partner in business with somebody, I wouldn't just let a family member come to me and they never done something before. And then they just want to be like, yeah, we're going to go in 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, no. If you went to school for that or that's something that you know more about, then that's cool. But mm-hmm. otherwise, then I'm going to have to find somebody else that know about that and we can groom you and train you up. Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Family members pay heed to that, too, because be, sometimes there's a lot of expectations um, maybe even entitlement with your success, yes. right? And your celebrity. So even with that, family members have to learn how to cope with it. I've had family members who have sent out tweets and different things and mm. put my name in it that uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that upset me, to say the least. Mm-hmm. And I realized I never gave them boundaries, right? right. I've seen um, headlines with your mom speaking out um, about Oof. relationships <laughs> how, it's your mother though. What do you do? How do you how do you create yeah, it's those? Like, bu- what do you do? Yeah. Um, um, I've never really kind of got the hang of what do you do in the mama situation yeah. because you know I just kind of like you know was raised like your mama is your mama. You can't you know cut your mama off you know whatever mm-hmm. and you don't disrespect your mama. But at the same time, like sometimes, you know, your, your parents can push your button. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um, I mean, I guess I'm just like anybody else who is in that situation where I, you know, I, don't, I would never um, be disrespectful to my mom. Absolutely. But, um, you know, I, you know, sometimes you go through your moments where you be like, yeah, I may not call you for a couple of days. <laughs> Give it a day. <laughs> Give it some space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's the it's the um most interesting thing. I haven't had. Yeah, I have had my mother. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at him. Yo, yo. Yo, be, oh, tell the just, truth. <laughs> yeah, mama be doing it too. <laughs> what do you do? <sighs> Nothing. Just a couple days. <laughs> can you do? Can you do? Yeah, yeah, it's like, like what, what can, can you do? do? I, uh, people always be on, I see people online. It's time for her to check her mama. You, you check, check my mama. mama. What's wrong with you? Stop you it. Check your mama. Yeah, you don't check your mama. I mean, yeah. it's, I mean, I just kind of feel like now. I, now I take it back. I do have some friends who have that type of relationship with their parents where they have checked them, and I'd be like, mm-hmm. wow, like. You can do, do that. that? Wow. <laughs> like, yeah, but not yeah. not on my no. side of the family. Like, no. You just got to give it to God. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my mom is the youngest of fourteen kids, Damn. and all of my aunts and uncles, you know, felt like they was your mama, your daddy too. Like, I remember my aunts and you know coming with my mom to sit me down as I said, sit down when I was younger. So if I say something to her that's out of pocket, they gonna come in too. It's like a whole. <laughs> Family gang up. I ain't got time for that. You ain't go. <laughs> Candy getting beat up by the auntie and uncle. <laughs> yeah, I have to like whenever I'm dealing with something, I call my cousin Weenie and I'm like, "Would you talk to her, please? Just talk to her." Uh huh. Cousin yeah. Weenie. Yeah, my cousin Weenie. I get her. I be like, "Please talk to her," because she is like really trying it right now. C- so c- she talks to her, and I just have to give her a break. Shout out to all our moms, man. They just be happy. Yeah. Yep, they did just be happy about the kids' success. Or not. 
<laughs> they're well, happy. Say, yeah. Those women are happy about the kids' success, but not happy that they may not have the same control that they did when you were younger. Yeah, I think that's more so. Yeah, thing. and look at her; she just did a Coca Cola commercial right there. You see how <laughs> she mm. took that sip? Go ahead, okay. now nah, do your thing. My bad. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> good. We could get a check from that too. Oh, Candy <laughs> Burns is here. Give her a big round of applause. I love the diversity in your portfolio. Oh, thank you. Your business portfolio. Mm-hmm. Producing on Broadway, was that just always a dream of yours? Well, being on Broadway was a dream of mine. Okay. Having some type of uh, participation in Broadway was always a dream of mine. I think when I was younger, I didn't really understand the job of a producer mm-hmm. for that to have been my dream as a young kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went to performing arts school. Um, a lot of people don't know before our group ever, you know, came okay. out or whatever. We were at Tri-Cities High School of Visual Performing Arts. Shout out to y'all. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. And um, I was there for drama. Uh-huh. Um, and then I also was in the Youth Ensemble of Atlanta for musical theater outside of the school. So I did both of those you things. You trained for this. Yeah. Well, that was, you know, when I was a kid, you uh-huh. know what I mean? Um, so that was like always the dream. You know, some of the friends of, you know, people that actually went to school with me have gone on to be Tony nominated, Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, stuff like that. So it's like, you know, a group of us who that's what we did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was like the talk, like, ooh, one day we will, you know. And so, but for me, you know, my music career with my group Escape um, jumped off first. And so my acting dreams and stuff kind of went to the wayside for a while. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the last, you know, six, seven years, I really kind of amped it up on doing my auditions, going out there and putting myself out there. And, you know, that's how I ended up getting acting roles and stuff like that. So the first thing I did on Broadway, I was... um, Mama Morton in mm-hmm. Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, Damn. And that was as an actress. And then the opportunity came up um, last year for me to be able to come on board with Thoughts of a Colored Man as a mm-hmm. producer. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was like super, super important, the project itself mm-hmm. and what it was, you know, all about. And plus the fact that Broadway had been shut down. And I wanted it to come back with a little bit more diversity. And so, yeah, I mean, for that reason, I've gotten even more involved in the Broadway world because I feel like it's important for us to see um, more representation Mm -hmm. in front of and behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Um, So that was my first project. And now... Um, my producer and partner on that was like, hey, the next project I'm doing is the piano lesson. And I'm working with Latanya Richardson Jackson mm-hmm. to put this together. You, you know, would you want to be a part of it with us or whatever? And I was like, of course. Yeah. Well, you know, uh-huh. um, another thing about it, like to me to see Latanya Richardson Jackson be the first black woman to direct a August Wilson production. Mm-hmm. On Broadway, I just thought, you know, hey, we, we need to see that. Yeah, round of applause. That's, that's, awesome. that's dope. Shout out to her. So, you know, I wanted to be a part of that. As a producer, what was your job? Was it? It's not solely to put up money, is it? Not solely. Um, mm-hmm. Producers, obviously, you know, they do, you know, participate financially in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but for us, um, also to get the word out there, because like I said, for me, it's um, been very important to diversify yes broadway i mean i think i've told you this before when i came last past, year yeah. that you know for a long time broadway was known as the great white way mm-hmm. and it's just time that you know people of color like know that it's not just for one group of people it's for everybody and um you know these are there are shows out there that you know representation for you that you can feel connected to and you know, come on out. That's and right. I and also with me getting the word out there to the world is is it's even better because it's not just like the people of New York who normally go to shows. Mm-hmm. Now you got people coming from all over to fly in to see mm-hmm. the show. So um just, you know, doing my part to make sure. You're doing more than your part, Candy. Give it up for Candy Burris, yep. man. Come on. <laughs> Love this one. I can't wait for the candy movie to come out. The Candy Movie. Candy Burris. The biopic? 
Oh God, speak yeah. that in my life, I guess. Come on. Hell, though. <laughs> like yeah. she be like, you, you. It's dope that you're so humble, though, Candy. Real Thank talk, you. but you, that needs to happen. You need <laughs> a if happen. you need a scene in it where you just had a radio station, you know. And I so, came in, they start playing this like candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, we got you right there. All right. Tracy had a question. We were having a conversation earlier about um, Heather had an experience. Um, <laughs> you just telling all my business. I told y'all just talk to Candy last week. She don't need to know no more. But that's why I thought you said you had a great, brilliant conversation and, and she could give us some insight that. on it, though. What was our Maybe. experience? Mm. JC can tell you. You want me to tell your business? So, like, your cousin Weenie, right? Mm -hmm. I have a cousin, Kim. Okay. She's my, my road dog. We call her Cuddy. She yeah. runs with me to different spots I'm probably not supposed to be in. A friend invited me to a... She's the anal sex queen. Ooh. She invited me to a party. Uh -huh. I didn't know what kind of party it was because she said I didn't have to participate. Okay. Candy, I get there. It's all women just all over each other. Wait, what? <laughs> It, it was, was an actual sexual party? Mm -hmm. It's a sex party. Oh. In different rooms. They didn't serve any alcohol. And they, it was just women? Just women. And she invited you? Yeah, because we were working together on a different project. So I showed up. <laughs> Candy's browser Look at, up. Candy looking on eyelashes. <laughs> that, that didn't sound much like work, but okay. Yeah, I showed up. We were doing a talk show together, yeah, you know. So okay. I showed up with my cousin. We sat in the corner. Your cousin was a female too. Female too. Only okay. women. Okay. Oh, okay. They flabbergasted. Candy. So she just wanted you to watch. Yeah, she said I could just watch. No one would approach me, which they didn't. No one would if I didn't. She was interested in you. The girl, my friend, the one who invited you, the anal queen. Mm. Yo, they were, candy. that's why we got new candy. Like, I'm, I'm just like, unless this is a conversation, you guys, unless you guys had a conversation about um, sex and women, and you know how sometimes you could be having a conversation amongst friends and they'd be like, I don't know how two women can do it together. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you hear women say that some, some women who have never had that experience, and then she probably was like, hmm. I'm going to show her how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was telling, she was saying how she goes around and teaches people how to have healthy anal sex. Oh, and okay. she was like, "We there's parties in New York City all the time. I was like, where? But wait, but they do it together. Who do it together? The, the women. You said the women is doing the women, it together. No, that the, this party was just women. <laughs> But no, she teaches sex? people. But she, they had dildos, strap-ons. They got this them from your website. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can at bedroomcandy.com. We do have, we do have those for people who enjoy that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, hey, we got sex positivity, y'all. Yes, yeah. absolutely. No yeah. shaming. Okay. okay. Now so finish the story. I wasn't shaming. I was just blown away. Cause I didn't know all of this stuff happened. There were rooms. There were people being punched in the back. There were like floating toilet seats. Punched. <laughs> yeah, Tracy said it was S, -S, 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 -S Okay, well that's it's people who like that. Yeah. Right. There were floating toilet seats. Um, like they just take the toilet seat. It was on four legs, and you take your pants down, and somebody climbs underneath the seat and eats your butt. Like, <laughs> what, you watched it. <laughs> You clearly did. Okay, keep going. Right. Keep going. No judgment. No judgment. No judgment. No judgment. No judgment. Don't keep going. making me tell this damn story. No Everybody judgment. looking no at judgment. me with the Google eyes. Okay, stuff. okay, okay. Visual pleasure. So it's no alcohol either. Like, there's no alcohol. Were you getting turned on at any no, point? No. Never. Was candy, not even a bit. I couldn't believe that perfect. Like, these women were dressed in business suits. So they walk in, and 10, 15 minutes later, they change into like. Wonder mm. Woman a, a cat suit outfit, like all kind of shit. Like wow. it was just crazy to me. And then the That's interesting. The grand finale That's was my friend. She just strapped out and just laid on this contraption <laughs> like this, butt naked. My cousin said she looked like a glazed ham. And then a, a hundred oh, she women, must be thick. And my a hundred women started like snacking on her, just eating her and, and just like <laughs> you are her close me. me. I was there. You are lying. <laughs> On everything. No. Okay, first of all, I would have loved to have seen all of this. <laughs> there you go. Okay, let me there start you go. there. Tristan Terramino, Candy loves you. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen this. But um, 
I personally have never experienced a, a party like that. Now, I have been, you know, they have a place in Atlanta called Trapeze. Okay. And it's a quote unquote sex club. Mm-hmm. And it's where people go. You have to have like sign up for a membership and you go in. At first, it looks like a regular club, but then you go back through this room and then you have to take <laughs> off all your clothes. Or either you just have on like a little negligee or something very see through. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's all co-ed. Like, it, it's, it's you know, women and men that go in this place. And they don't have separate locker rooms. Everybody has to take their clothes off in the same locker room. Then once you get past that door, everybody's butt naked. Wow. Oh. Everybody. You got to take the negligee off? Well, you it has, if, if it's real skimpy, yeah, it they'll doesn't let you matter. keep it on. Okay. But there's no cameras, no nothing in this place. Right. And um, it's been a very long time since I've been there, of course, because I ain't got time for people to be putting me on um, (laughs) just in case somebody sneaks over there. But it was so interesting to me that people were so comfortable to just walk around. And then there were like these rooms where people would be having sex right next to each other, touching onto the person next to them, Mm. you know, like all kind of stuff. And like you, I was more so just of being a voyeur watching. Uh-huh. And I was like, ooh, this is interesting. Now, wow. I did go back a second time. <laughs> <laughs> so, the second time, no. And when I walked in the back part, I okay. saw somebody I knew. Oh. And I immediately died. You got out of there. <laughs> I was like, they didn't see me. So, I dove up under the lights. So, and I kept hiding. And I couldn't be comfortable because I was like, oh, God, they're going to tell so, somebody that I am here. Right. I'm getting out of here. So, yeah, I just never went back after that. But um, the first time I went, it was like a friend of mine had like a birthday and she wanted everybody, come on, everybody got to go. And so we all went. And, you know, you should never go to a place like that with a group of friends that you really not sure if you're truly comfortable being yourself around them because everybody's just sitting there looking at each other like, okay, is anybody going to try something? Is anybody going to try something? Mm-hmm. And everybody's looking at each other, staring, waiting for one of each right. the person to try. So you never, nobody's in the group is going to really do anything. Right. Uh, but you watching everybody else. Watching everybody stuff. else. That's okay. why Kim was there. But back to your friend. <laughs> 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 Who is a love, like, sweetest girl in the world. But she just wanted you to, to introduce her other side, apparently. So now that you know her other side, what do you think? It totally makes sense for her. Okay. Like, it makes sense for her. I'm just not that free. Yeah. I'm not that free. Maybe she was trying to free your spirit. <laughs> she wanted me to open my mind. She told me I needed to be more open-minded. I needed to Clearly. see it. Clearly. <laughs> she wanted you to be more open-minded. Yo, Candy, that grand and finale. And the simple fact that there were only women there, maybe she saw something in you. Mm. that she was trying to bring out. Just no, no. Okay, okay, Candy, you're going to get her knocked <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> Candy going to get that girl knocked out. You better stop playing, Candy. Yeah, Candy, I, mean, <laughs> I don't be judging people, but she knew that wasn't my kind of party. There it is, yo. Yo, let's give it up for Candy Burris for coming by. <laughs> yo. That was so funny. I was not expecting to have that conversation this morning. <laughs> Wake up. We thought about you. I was like, when Candy get here, we're going to talk to Candy about this. Well, wow. it, you know, you really you brightened up my morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. That's you never it. know where I'm going to be, Candy. There it is. In my mind, I'm, I'm envisioning all this going on like, ooh. Wow. <laughs> That's great. More <laughs> visual pleasure. All right, so um, the piano lesson is playing now at the St. James Theater. Make sure you guys check it out. Candy, yes. it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Always yeah, man. a pleasure. Always. Anything else you want folks to know? Um. Oh, have if y'all have not been watching my spoofs on Instagram, I have some more coming. So please follow me on Instagram, Candy, at Candy, K-A-N-D-I. Um, it's just some other content stuff I got going that's like really, really crazy. Well, come back anytime. Yes. It's your platform, okay? Thank we you. We love you here. Candy yes. Burris, Citizens.